Okay, so before we write our final explanation about the newts, let's get in a little practice about discussing mutations. So what you're seeing over there is an Antarctic eel pout. And they're a type of fish that can be up to three feet long and look like eels. They can range in color from yellow to brown, and they're found in very cold water, such as a water near Antarctica. You'll be considering the Antarctic eel points at three different times to explain, did mutations affect what trait was most common at time three, and why that did or did not happen? So I'll demonstrate first. I'll show you how we're going to analyze the histograms, how to give claim, evidence, and reasoning for this argument. And just a reminder of trait labels. Plus S is more likely to survive, minus S is less likely to survive. Plus O is likely to have more offspring, minus O is likely to have fewer offspring. And we have a new trait label, M, trait introduced by mutation. For what I'm gonna demonstrate, this is my histogram of the Antarctic eels at time one when they lived in cold, warm water. And we're gonna start by thinking about what traits are adapted for warm water and which ones are cold. And we're gonna consider the trait cold resistance. So I'm just gonna be labeling for the survival and offspring part. We can't really label any mutations at time one. And if I'm thinking about cold resistance in warm water, if the water's warm, my ability to resist the cold doesn't matter that much. So having a level two cold resistance, well, if it's in warm water, that's gonna be helpful because you don't really need to resist the cold too much. So you'd be more likely to survive, more likely to have offspring. You'd say the same about trait three. It's a little bit low in cold resistance, which is fine, they're in warm water. So this would be more likely to survive and have offspring as long as the water stays warm. However, traits four and five, mm, I would say that's probably gonna be a little less likely you'll survive and have offspring because if you have a high cold resistance in warm water, you're probably gonna overheat. So now I'm gonna consider the population at time two. When land masses moved millions of years ago, the water became much colder. Time two represents some time after that environment change. So let's go ahead and look through this histogram, analyzing the traits we see. We're going to consider again, are the traits that are adaptive and non-adaptive, but for cold water this time. And we're gonna think, did a new trait mutate between time one and time two? So if the environment changed to being cold, that means cold resistance actually is becoming an adaptive trait. The water is freezing, your better ability to avoid freezing to death is gonna increase your survival. So these individuals with low cold resistance probably going to freeze to death. So the lowest one, trait one, I would be very certain these would not survive and they would not be likely to have offspring. Trait two is a little better than trait one, but I still would not expect survival, probably not a high enough cold resistance. Trait three is in the middle ground. I would expect that there's at least a possibility that these would survive and have offspring. In traits four and five, I am pretty confident. That's a good amount of cold resistance. You'll probably survive if the weather suddenly turned to cold or rather the water changed to cold. So now that we have an idea of like the likelihood of survival and offspring, let's consider was there a mutation? At time two, I'm seeing traits one, two, three, four, and five. At time one, I saw traits two, three, four, and five. That means the new trait, trait one, that had to have been a mutation. Okay, now considering the population at time three. Time three represents many, many generations after the environment changed to cold water. And we're still gonna consider, are the traits we're seeing adaptive to cold water or non-adaptive? And did a new trait mutate between time one to time three? So at time three, the environment is still colder water. 
And again, having a high cold resistance is adaptive to cold water, low cold resistance is non-adaptive. So trait two, yeah, we already said this, trait two is unlikely to survive and unlikely to have offspring. Trait three, yeah, there's at least a possibility of survival and offspring. And traits four and five, they actually are fairly adaptive to the cold water. Now the real question is, do we see a mutation between time one to time three, and that mutation survived? Well, in population three, I'm seeing traits two, three, four, and five. But when I look back at time one, traits two, three, four, and five. There was not a mutation seen in the population at time three. So what does this all mean? So did mutations affect which trait was most common at time three? Why or why not? In this situation, no, mutations did not affect which traits was most common at time three. The evidence is a mutation for cold resistance for trait one did happen in the population at time two, but this trait was non-adaptive. There are no individuals with trait one in pop at time three. And the reason is mutations to genes can sometimes introduce new traits into a population. New traits that are non-adaptive like cold resistance and cold water will become less common over many generations. So now it's your turn. You're going to analyze the histograms, give your claim, evidence, and reasoning. So, write or discuss. At time one, the Antarctic eel pouts used to live in warmer water. What traits are adaptive? What traits are non-adaptive for warmer water? Awesome. Okay. At time two, the Antarctic eel pouts live in cold water. What traits are non are adaptive to cold water and not adaptive to cold water? Was there a mutation between the population at time one to time two? At time three, Antarctic eel pouts have been living in cold water for many generations. What traits are adaptive to cold water and non adaptive to cold water? Was there a mutation between the population at time one and the population at time three? Did mutations affect which trait was most common at time three, why or why not? And when you're done writing or discussing that one, really look back at your key concepts and be feeling really good about the reasoning that you have here. <laughs>